That's how much snow I got. We got about a foot and a half up here in this area. And Marcel, what do you think you got over there? Uh, easily four feet. And we're supposed to get another 20 inches on Sunday. Wow, man. That's a lot of fucking snow. And this is the 420 Radio Show. This is the Fifty Shades of Green episode. Fifty Shades of Green. Yes, we're going to talk about de- decarboxylation and <laughs> yeah, and all of the different Fifty Shades of, of uh, decarboxylation. Fifty Shades of Green. And we are here today with uh, Jack Kungle, who is a cancer survivor, thanks to cannabis, and Adam Hartle, who is a filmmaker and comedian. Gentlemen, hello. Welcome to the show. Yeah, uh, we're gonna kind of uh, bounce back and forth between uh, Jack and Adam, and uh, uh, Adam is a recre- <laughs> Adam is a recreational user, and is that what we call them? Recreate? That sounds so druggy, but it's not true. Yeah, I like to say because, like- because I'll, I'll I'll give you a perfect example of this right away. Okay, Adam, when do you use it? After the kids go to bed, why do you know? use it? Stress relief. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just you know safe from alcohol, no hangovers. But to me, I like to say that I like to. I don't necessarily say that I'm a recreational user. I like to say that I like to breathe warm air past a natural plant. Oh yeah, okay. well, that, that's a nice way to put it. But if you're using it to 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 uh, decrease stress after work and things like that. Then you're you're still using it medicinally. Yeah, that's true. It's a good point. Yeah, I use it for work too. I like to get high and write jokes. I think it helps. You know what? Uh, speaking of that, uh, we had uh, uh, Mike Mc, uh, Mike McDonald on the show. Do you know who that is? Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I do know, know who that is. I know yeah, you, from you guys. Uh, yeah, from yeah, he does. He did a lot of just for laughs, and and he's a stand-up. he's a funny dude. Oh, he's hilarious. He is hilarious. And he was telling us that. That's the only time he smokes is when he's writing. He does not really? perform high or anything. He only smokes when he's writing. Yeah, I like to write. High, I like to write high and perform drunk. Now that's the winning combination for me. Really? <laughs> not drunk, but I like to have a couple a couple drinks in me. I'm superstitious, and the first time I got up on stage was a couple years ago, and you know I needed some of that liquid courage, and it went well. I won an open mic, and so I'm, I'm superstitious. I like to do that every time. Wow. <laughs> well, if it works, do it. <clears throat> Whatever works, yeah. So, yeah. Jack, Jack, uh, fill us in about uh, you, please. Say that again. I didn't hear you. I was busy rolling a joint. Talk about yourself while you're rolling said joint. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, okay. Well, I'm a, I'm a cancer survivor uh, who was terminal. Uh, it was four and a half years ago, and they had uh, given me six, six months if I let them remove my body parts in a year. I tops, and so I start to do a little bit of homework, and uh, I took the route of cannabis, and here it is. Four and a half years later, I'm off 16 medications, uh, cured my cancer, uh, fixed my diabetes, it fixed my blood pressure, it regulated my weight, 62 pounds, it fixed my cholesterol, it gave me the use of my upper body back because I have bilateral carpal tunnel, uh, bilateral ulnar nerve entrapment, I've got two torn rotator cuffs, I've got a blown right knee, worn a leg brace for 40 years and through cannabis ingestion and cannabis oil, now I got the use of my arms, I don't have the leg brace, and I'm cancer-free, and all that other stuff happens. Those are the side effects. That's awesome. The side yeah. effects of cannabis. Yeah. Yes. We, happy, hungry, yeah. sleepy, healthy. High, healthy, healthy, and happy. Never been healthy in my life. It's, uh, yes, yeah, so much for, so much for, uh, we need more. 
you know, studies. You want oh, studies? You, come and, you want to hear studies? Come and listen to us every Friday night, <clears throat> seven o'clock, right here. You know and, that, like uh, it's we'll sophisticated, it. but but big thing too, it's is diet. You know that that's that's the biggest thing because when somebody has cancer, they're acidic, and the reason you're acidic, it has to do with diet. So everybody's vitamin D is low. So there's all the this scenario that's happening in your body that you need to address. So when you ingest the oil and what it does it just goes in and straightens out the endocannabinoid system so now you've tuned up the engine you just now need to put the proper gas in so and cancer can't live in an alkaline environment so you start to just eat alkaline foods and and you change the the whole uh, way the body functions internally right and so now they when uh, when a person, when a cancer cell develops, it develops insulin receptors, so it feeds on sugar. <clears throat> the body knows the cell's gone rogue, and it's already instructed it to grow cannabinoid receptors, the kill switch, the off switch. So you just need to eat the shit. That simple. Now, That's cool, man. Very cool. I I, that, I find that uh, there's a. Uh, we're going to enlighten Adam here because he's the, the rec guy. Uh, and you said that you've had a few edibles, right, Adam? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I prefer smoking it, but I've done edibles a few times. Have, do you vape? Do you dab? Do you do I all do. that Va- stuff? Vaping is my favorite way. It's the cleanest, yep. and um, I, I think it's more efficient. It doesn't set the plant on fire. But, yeah, I like to vape preferably. But like you said it during the break, I'll, I'll smoke anything, man. Anyway, it's fine. Is, it's do you use your vape material, Adam? Yeah, I was going to ask you that. I do not. No. Do you I should. need to be? Is that like what do you what do you do? You can cook with it. Yeah. Lots of CBDs left in that stuff, buddy. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. And other stuff. That's cool. So you just put it like in a bag, a Ziploc bag or something. Yep. yep. Save her up and then <clears throat> just grind her up and then take a teaspoon of that and throw it into a cup or a cup of yogurt. No way. You can you just eat it. Yeah. yeah. Because it's already it's been decarboxylated now when you vaporize it. There, I told you we were going to talk about that dirty stuff. So <laughs> you can you can also t- turn around and grind it into really? a nice fine powder and use it with flour for baking. Okay, that's cool. So you can just eat the the vaped leaves. You just mix it with yogurt yeah. and eat it plain. Yes, and it's good for you. Yes. Oh, absolutely. It'll be just like you ate a brownie. So hang on to your hat. You know, if you have if you have a vaporizer with a nice bowl on it, a bowl type vaporizer that collects all that nice resin on the inside of that, yeah, you can eat, you can eat that as well. Okay, yeah, I do have that. Yeah, it does build up. Yeah, that's wild. You guys are hardcore, man. Wait, how many years have you guys been smoking weed for? Um, since I was nineteen, I'm fifty. I, I started when I was twelve. Oh, Marcel! But then I I stopped for ten years. Because it was just, I was going through an ounce and a half a week, and it was getting too expensive. Damn! I, Damn. I started when I was 11, and I'm 62. Dang, that's cool. And, and then that made me want to do anything else. Then oh. I got sick, and when I got sick, like, I started, good. I started using more than I thought even any humanly possible. Yep, absolutely. And I've been doing doing that since 2008. You guys are hardcore. That's cool. It's very interesting. And here I thought I smoked a lot of weed. <laughs> uh, the biggest thing you had to do was you had to re-educate yourself on, on, on cannabis because everything that I thought I knew about it was false. For sure. Uh, yeah. I love then, hanging out with people that smoke more weed than me because it's like, man, I don't smoke a lot of weed. These guys smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> yeah. If anybody ever gives me shit, my wife's ever is like, oh, you're smoking too much. <laughs> You, you know, to make to make the cannabis more effective, too, uh, you eat mango, okay? because the mango goes in and it cleans the it's the scrubbing bubbles. Mango and green tea, they're like scrubbing bubbles for the endocannabinoid system. So it go you you eat this, and so it'd be just like back when you were in high school and you smoked that first joint. It makes the cannabis more effective again. If you and eat mango with it, are, are you a smoker, like a cigarette smoker, Adam? Eat. No, I do no. not. Okay. No, we do the only thing I do. Some, Alcohol occasionally. Some people they'll batch, they'll mix a little bit both because tobacco opens the lungs more, and you actually get a really, really, uh, 
uh, you get a head rush out of it. That's but, how I smoke my joints. Yeah, but there's also some uh, asphyxiation going on there with that way as well, right? Yeah, okay. I got enough. I got enough uh, cannabinoids in my system. I'm not worried of any cancer ever. Yeah, I quit smoking. It's been two and a half years, I think. Yeah, I don't really get cigarettes. I really... hate the. I can't stand the taste of pot anymore. I hate really? the smell of it. I hate the taste of it. I'm through so much of it. Um, uh-huh. I had to start doing all the cooking and baking for edibles with oil because I can't t- stand the taste of chlorophyll. You got the gag factor. Oh, do I ever. Yeah. And if somebody passes me one, it'll come out just as quick as it went in. Yeah. Yeah, that happens to a lot of people. It does. So I, I started writing my own cookbook that I'll, I'll get out soon. I just keep coming up with more recipes that are basically all made with concentrates, um, and they're all done so that they're not baked or cooked. Because as soon as you cook it, you're starting to vaporize it. Yes. And you're vaporizing the medicinal ingredients out of it by cooking it. So I've come up with recipes that uh, don't require any high temperature, so there's no chance of vaporization. Because it's concentrated, it's already decarboxylated. So when you eat it, if you're not used to it, you get high. Yeah. And this sure. week, this week I came up with eat more bars eat that taste just like those eat more bars. Eat more bars. Those are peanut butter things. Pardon? They have peanut butter in them. Suck it up. They don't taste like peanut butter. No, I don't do peanut butter, buddy. But you eat peanuts. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> well, there's peanuts in it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hey, you guys forgot, to, uh, Jack, you forgot to mention the coolest part of your story about how you ingested the cannabis. Yeah, you oh. like that. I do. Right. It's, very, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, before I, I mean, forget, <coughs> before I forget, guys, I want to bring up the fact that uh, Dr. Bronner died uh, on Tuesday, who is yeah, I heard the, about that. the gentleman that uh, did the soaps and creams and all that stuff. That's uh, a real loss to the community. Have you ever tried his stuff, any of you? My my no. wife does buy a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've never never had the uh, privilege of trying it before. But you make you make balms and stuff like that, don't you guys? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Marce- we pretty much got it all covered. I think Marcel fell over. Oh, I was answering in the chat room. Sorry. It's okay. I'm just kidding. Oh, chat, <laughs> chat room people. Oh, hello, Lori. <laughs> Lori's Lori's lurking in our chat room. Lori's always lurking around somewhere. <laughs> well, she's she's actually great because she tells me that it sounds perfect. So, but she she doesn't like being just in the chat room. That I do know. <laughs> well, one of these days. One of these days. Anyways, um, we're gonna take a quick break, and then we're gonna come back and talk more with Adam and Jack about Jack. Jack's gonna tell us. How he did it just to entertain Adam. Adam's going to come up with all kinds of great scripts for this. I will say it's a credit to Jack's ingenuity. He's he's going to have sets coming out the yin yang from tonight's show. I'm sure sure of it. But yeah, we come back and Jack and and everybody. <laughs> Jack and everybody. <laughs> Somebody's over medicated. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I think we all did. So, uh, there's this little lady that I've been listening to for a while named Addie Lane, and uh, she sent me one of her pro pot songs. It's called All for One, and we're going to listen to that, and then we'll be back here on the 420 Radio Show, live on Lifestyle Radio. Come on in the chat room and smoke one with us, and say hello. Push buttons. Push my buttons. There we go. Hello. Selling fear was key to protecting. 
are back. This is the 420 Radio Show. We are live on Lifestyle Radio. Sorry to jump that at you guys. I missed the button. And uh, didn't think that we should be playing the doors. So we're back. Hi, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> Marcel you know you're not alone. We, we should have just all stayed quiet, let him think he was alone for a bit. Makes the show really you, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? You know better than to do that because I'll fucking get you back. <laughs> All right, Jack. Everybody wants to hear, especially Adam, because I'm sure he's got his pen and paper wrote and he's taking notes now. Because you know his next gig is going to include you, yeah, and your and your okay. nether regions. <laughs> Righty. So how I how I took the medication, I uh, I ingested it. And uh, I did suppositories, uh, and I inhaled it. Now the uh, through ingestion, when you uh, ingest oil, and how the liver processes it, you lose 40 percent of the potency. So we add a little coconut oil to it, and it keeps a little, the the it allows a little more to get through. But when we do uh, suppositories, you get almost 95 percent of it, and uh, the, the first time I uh, did the suppository, so I've never shoved anything up my butt before. So yeah, I can imagine. We gotta save your life. You're gonna do it. I'll yeah. shove anything in my ass to save my life. I'm with you. You heard it. You well, heard it here I first, folks. It was 5 a.m. in the morning. And dropped my pants down around my ankles, and I made all that the point of no return. Thanks. And they, the, I got this mold, and so they look like uh, little little bullets, eh? Yeah. I got a little coconut oil and reamed up the butthole, and then I bent over and I started to shove it in there, and I had no idea how far you put it up there at all. <laughs> you have no experience shoving it as fast. It was I, like, uh, where did it go? Uh, <laughs> As I said, Fifty Shades of Green. <laughs> but the reason it was funny during the break that you mentioned that you did it that way because when you eat it, your kidney does something to the di- during the digestion process, correct? Uh, the the liver. The liver, yeah. So shoving yeah. up your ass is a, is a cleaner way to get the medicine to fight yes. the cancer, basically. Yes, and uh, the rocket of the bad stuff. Yep, and if you have a problem. With the high, you don't get no high when you do a suppository. Yeah, so that's that's interesting. And so we were joking around. I said during the break, I said, so you mean to tell me that you're better off instead of getting thousands of costly surgeries from top doctors, you're better off just shoving some weed up your ass? That's better for your health. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that. it is. <laughs> honestly, that's okay. cool. Now, Jack, I got a follow-up question. Yeah. I, I know people are going to want to know this. Because I've been asked before, how did you make your suppositories? I used uh, coconut oil, so I did the extract right into the coconut oil. So I was making my suppositories. I took a pound of cannabis and I used uh, 2.2 liters of uh, coconut oil to do the extract. And so what I did is, uh, in a slow cooker, put it on high for one hour and then on warm for the next 48 hours and then it, you strain it and then like I say I had uh, a mold and uh, you put them fill up it's a 20 cavity mold and then I pop it into the freezer for 15 minutes I then take it out crack it on the table and then they drop out like bullets and then I just make a whack of them up like like that and then uh or uh, if I'm using uh, it as a topical, like for aches and pains, it works exactly the same because the skin is the biggest sponge that you have. And uh, I add uh, uh, liquid vitamin D3 to it also and emu oil because the emu oil opens up the pores and allows for better absorption. Did you say emu uh, oil? As emu in, oil. In the bird? The bird, that's correct. Okay. Emu. Emu. Okay, how do they get the oil out of the bird? They squeeze it. <laughs> they squeeze poor emus to get oil. They're juicing. They're juicing emus. There, see, we learn all kinds of cool shit in this show. 
They juice emus for emu oil. Get the oil. Have you ever said making ass medicine was easy? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And now, and now to somebody's going to be having the, having this stuff and putting it on their face, and they're going to be thinking, "Hmm, wonder where emu oil comes from." <laughs> and then they're going to find out that they just juice emus. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> now, yeah. I'm gonna have, I, now I'm going to have to look up emu oil. Emu oil, and while while Marcel is doing that. Let's switch to Adam and talk about uh, your comedy, your movies. And I actually got a question here from my buddy Michael, who does the coverage radio show here on Tuesdays at 8 o'clock on Lifestyle Radio. Plug, plug, plug. Um, he wanted to know, uh, what, did, what did you want to know, Michael? What's your question? Oh, how did you get into comedy? What, what, what made you go there, Adam? We, he he watched your movie with me the other day. That's why he's asking you that. Very cool. Yeah, tell him thanks for watching. Um, you know, I've always wanted to do it, and I'd always admire comedians. My heroes are guys like George Carlin and Bill Hicks that mm -hmm. you know, not only can make it funny, but had like kind of purpose behind what they were saying. Yeah. yeah I like to talk about real stuff on stage and make it funny. I think when people are laughing, they're listening. So I try to get their attention through comedy, but also try to change the world in my own in my own little way which I think we all were kind of put here to do. And yep. so um, I've just always enjoyed doing it. I was a class clown in school growing up and always liked to laugh and have a good time, so it kind of came naturally. Did you find time to watch the movie, Marcel? I've gotten about half of it done, mm. but then I get phone calls and messages, yeah. plus I've been sick. So yeah. And then shoveling. Well, we, uh, Michael and I watched it a couple of days ago. Uh, yeah, and shoveling. Um, uh, snow, of course. Uh yeah, and uh, I didn't. I didn't realize it's a, it's an actual feature length. Yeah, how long? How long did you shoot? Well, we went out originally, and it was over a course of two years. But I think about twenty five film days. We first went out in two thousand and twelve, the week before the vote in Colorado. Yeah, and we had scheduled some comedy shows out there to coincide with the vote. Uh huh. And we were just uh, hopeful that it was going to pass. You know, we had our fingers crossed, and we met all the activists that helped get it on the ballot. Yeah. And they invited us to their post party, and we did a lot of different street interviews, did some comedy shows, and basically just filmed everything for about 10 straight days. And then the vote passed, and we came back and edited that, and we had about 70 minutes. And then um, we thought, you know, let's go full-length feature with this and go back and, and document the opening of the first ever shops. So we went back a year later uh, when the shops were regulated and opening up uh, the 1st of 2014. And myself and the director were first in line, and we purchased the first joints legally sold in U.S. history. Yeah, I, I, I was going to ask you about that. You were actually the first ones in the U.S. Yeah, we were first in line. They had a like a ceremonial guy come in that bought a sack, and then we bought um, in a different room. We were buying joints. So yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. We bought the first ones. We camped out overnight in the freezing cold in Denver, <laughs> and for a couple of Florida guys, that was not easy. But um, it was a really neat experience. We knew it was going to be historical. We wanted to be the first ones there in line, and so it was worth the wait, and we met some really cool people. So uh, The owner of the store gave us a tour the day before yeah. for the film, and so we were able to document the shop and everybody putting everything on the shelves. It was really cool to kind of watch the you know, the, the, the mad rush because the lines were crazy. The lines were out the door for like the first week straight. It was nuts. Oh, I bet. I bet. And, and, Turns and out people like weed. Who knew? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who would look, mm -hmm. Now, who would like that more than alcohol? Imagine. <laughs> you guys ever been to Colorado? No, I I want to go. Um, in I think next week we have. Uh, I I should have it open, but I don't. Of course, uh, we have. Uh, I think his name is Christopher or something like that. I have to look it up. You guys talk for a minute. And I'll look it up. I want to tell you about next week's guest because uh, I, he's... I, I don't go to the States. I, I'd be considered a an enemy of the state. Why is that? Because uh, I'm quite outspoken about medical cannabis. I gotcha. Yeah. Well, it's changing pretty rapidly. When we started filming, I think there were 17 states that had legal marijuana. Now I think it's up to like what, 25, 26, something like that. I was gonna, yeah. I was gonna it's ask growing. you about that. So it's, it's pretty good in four years. It's only been better. That was a while ago, though, right? So I mean, since 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 you did that, that when when did the movie come out? 
Uh, movie came out in 2014. Okay. Started so, filming in 2012. So since since you did all the filming in that, and then the movie came out, a lot has changed. For sure. You know. Yeah, it's it's, it's snowballing big time. <laughs> well, there's no stopping it now. It's just gonna keep no. going. No, they can't put the lid back on that jar. Yeah. So it's exciting time. I like to see. Uh, for me personally, I like to see. Um, the sales of marijuana go towards society, go towards helping out people. I think that's what the plant's all about. I think what's happening right now is the exact opposite of what the plant's all about with the cartels and the murdering and the greed and the money. I think that's the exact opposite. That's, that's where I got a problem with here for. Yeah, that's where I got a problem with the Stanley brothers. Who's that? The boys in Colorado, Charlotte's Web. Okay. Well, they're keeping it yeah. all to themselves. Oh, the right? CBD oil. Yeah. 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 There I are, have big problems with there, CBD oil. I, I just yeah. pulled. I just Why pulled up that? an article here. I just pulled up an article here, guys. It says uh, the title is the Col- uh, Colorado marijuana industry sold almost seven hundred million worth in two thousand and fourteen. That's crazy. It, it is crazy. Yeah, that's cool. Made big bucks. Well, it's nice knowing that your money's going towards the construction of new schools as opposed to. You know your drug dealer's new new tattoo or whatever. Well, there's articles showing up that are saying that they are making so much from you know taxing and and service fees and all that that they're giving in some ways they're giving it back to the community. Oh, really? Yeah. So I mean, it, cool. it it is nice to see that. It is really nice to see that. Yeah, it's a it's a neat place. I really like Denver. Everybody out there was really cool. It was the right blend of like it's it's you know in the states we're so crazy with Republicans and Democrats and fighting and all that bullshit. Mm. The um, but Denver's a nice healthy mix because there's people on the left, there's people on the right, and there's people in the middle, and everybody's kind of cool with everybody. So it's one of those few states where everybody seems to get along. It it well it's the wilderness and the you know that whole wow factor of. Everything there. I mean, it's yeah, something about pretty, mountains. I don't know what it is about mountains. It seems not, like people figure it out. And you live next to a mountain, you start figuring shit out. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> you think nice that? I'm pretty sure it was just the, the amount of cannabis they were putting into them that they figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, no. <we're laughs> Yeah. Okay. the 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 names the his name is Christian and he's on next week. I uh, Hag Hag Hagseth. I can't remember his can't pronounce his last name. He is the founder and president of Denver, Colorado's Green Man Cannabis. It's a ranch and amphitheater, and the world's first weedery. I'm I'm uh, excited to find out more about that. A weedery. Yeah. A I'd weedery. like to have a, a weedery. I'd like to have a weedery too. That's cool. Yeah, there's a lot of new businesses starting in Colorado. It's opened the door for a lot of different entrepreneurs. And when uh, you think about how many businesses are around alcohol, when when you, you know, were when you were shooting your movie, what happen. when you were shooting your movie, Adam, did did you get like was everybody pretty you know open armed about it? Did you get anybody that says, oh no 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 can't do that? Did you have a uh, time that, that it should not be legalized? No, that they wouldn't even go on camera or anything. Um, yeah, we we reached out to some people. The governor of uh, Colorado said no, Hick and Looper. Mm-hmm. Uh, we tried to get Hancock, the mayor of, of Denver. He also said no. Yeah. Um, but you know, then like Congressman Tancredo said yes. We're like, shit, this guy said yes. This is cool. That's cool. You know, we were able to get some some high profile people in the film too. So it was a fun experience. Well, that's good. That's good. Somebody just said, uh, Adam, you make me want to move to Colorado. On Tweety. Do I want to move to Colorado? No, somebody no. says that you're with the way you're talking about Colorado, it makes them. I would to love there. to, yeah. Here's the, I mean, this is only a downside for me because I'm from Florida. You guys yeah. probably wouldn't mind at all, but the the winters are way too harsh for me. I can't, <laughs> I, just, I can't do the cold. But um, yeah, there's no cooler place to be in, in when the summer and the spring than Denver, Colorado, to me. It's just a really neat place. It's almost like when we go there, we went there three times, twice for filming and once for the premiere. And when you come back to your home, it's like you go in a time machine back in time, and then you land and you're back at your home. You look around like I'm in a different place now. Mm. That's fun. Yeah, we just go a hundred miles north for that. Adam, what you, being in Florida, what you should do is start going after all the senior citizens and educating them. Yes, you should because they're the ones that vote. That's true. Yeah, and get, 
get them to vote so that they can at least have a medical program. For sure, yeah. The, we're going to get the medical in 2016. I helped get some signatures this last time, and we were two percentage points away, and it was a non-presidential year, so I'd be I'd be very surprised if medical doesn't pass in Florida in 2016, which is huge. Like, there are a lot of senior citizens here. A lot of people need it. Robert Platthorn uh, does, a, do. does a lot of stuff down Florida's there. Florida's the worst pills, one of the worst pill places on, on Earth. It's terrible how easy it is to get pain pills here, and it's it's an epidemic. But so that's what yeah. doctors do. That's their business. Right? They, they, that's all they know. They can give you stitches and they can give you pills. They don't know anything else. Yeah. And when when these guys come through and I like when I go to the doctor and I sit down, it's very sad that when I know more about my disease than the doctor does. Well, you yeah. Know, Marcel Marcel said it really well. I think last week when he said that they're practitioners. They're still practicing. Yeah, they're still right. practicing. Yeah. yeah. Practice yeah. until they find something that works, and that's yeah. what doctors do on, on the whole. And doctors also get the majority of their information from pharmaceutical representatives. That don't know nothing. They're salesmen. They they can sell anything because they're salesmen. That's what the profession is, whether it's, it's one drug or another drug or another drug or yeah. vacuum cleaners. It's yep. still sales, and that's not knocking sales because I used to do sales, and I probably would have rocked in pharmaceutical sales. Hey, Jack, have you ever considered um, finding, reaching out to other people that had the cancer that you had and letting them know, hey, I got this freaking... Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I do all day long. That's I, cool, man. Is uh, help other people, eh, here. and uh, that's... Uh, because people need to know, it's pretty simple, it's... Uh, Eat a plant, you know. Change your diet, positive attitude, mentally, spiritually, physically. It's just not cannabis, so it's a whole complete lifestyle change that has to happen. Well, that's I mean, yeah, it's a lifestyle. You didn't get sick, you didn't get sick overnight, and there is no sixty ninety day cure. Uh, so wherever long, you know, and how aggressively, and like we're hardwired for this. There's. This is the only thing on the planet that we're hardwired for, nothing else. Everything that has a nervous system will respond to cannabis. I mean, I had a, my lab, he was 14 and a half years old in his hind end. Uh-oh. And when he couldn't go to, to the cannabis, I started to feed it to my dog. And I was making these cannabis capsules out of the decarb cannabis left over from the vaporizer. And I started to feed it to my dog. And so I was feeding him about a gram and a half um, a day, and by four weeks' time, he was back walking out the door. Eight weeks later, we were back across the field chasing rabbits. I got another four and a half years I'm out of my dog. I'm doing that and now with Buster Jack. Oh cool, man. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm doing I, that. I didn't put him down because of his hips. I got a band, and we were over in the middle of the lake uh -huh. on an island playing, and the tornado come through. Uh -oh. He had a stroke. Oh, no. I'm so doing, he'll still be here. I'm doing that now with my, my guy, Buster, and uh, he's 13, and he's got some lumps, and he's already been for a round of removal. And they just yeah. keep coming back, and so I get, uh, I make cookies for myself, and I always give him a little scoop of butter in his food every morning. And he goes out and still runs around in the snow, and but he has his good days and his bad days, just like me. We will straight coconut oil too. Uh, I will, I'll, I'll get on that. Yeah, I will. Uh, I wait. What I the best information that you can have. What I was Jack. doing is I was, yeah. get, I was getting um, the the half and half cap oil right and yeah. i was i would scoop out enough for me and then give him the rest and mm -hmm. i mean it, he was just full of life uh yeah but, but you know i mean dogs that it, it you can make them as comfortable as you want and but it comes very quickly and, and it happens very quickly with dogs unfortunately but yep. I, I hope I've gotten another summer or winter out of them. Maybe I can get another summer. I'm not going to be selfish about it. But it does work for animals, and and uh, we need to do a show about that, Marcel. Definitely soon. Oh, well, there's uh, there's a lot of vets that support it. Well, we need to find if there is a vet. If anybody knows any vets that want to come on the show and talk about it, please get a hold of us. Jack, Lori's got a question for you, and that yeah. is, 
Um, how long has your doctor supported your use of cannabis? Oh, it's he. Was he always on board? Yes. Well, actually, he, I, we, we, he didn't know what to do, and I didn't know what to do when we started, and uh, so he had originally signed my papers uh, be seven years ago. Wow! So that's I, I ingested the the cannabis capsules, and that's how I got off all my medications. How long were you using cannabis before you even went the legal route, Jack? Oh, since, since he was 12. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Years. Jack plays in a band. He's one of them musician guys. Oh, so he, yeah, he's, yeah, he's a pothead. That's cool. What do you play, Jack? <laughs> I, uh, play the ukulele, the accordion, the harmonicas, the didgeridoo, uh, Man, the penny cool. He plays the weird shit. The weird yeah. Shit. I like it, man. That's cool stuff. Come on, break, break up. Go get the didgeridoo there, buddy. Let's hear some didgeridooing. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, there. Putting, putting Look, him on the just, spot. We're just feeding Adam so much material for another <laughs> show, you know. <laughs> that was that was well use of the word didgeridooing. It's not hard. It's not easy to turn that word into a verb. Yes, but I. Oh, wow. Holy crap, he does have one. <laughs> that almost sounds like the. the Jack, you feel like I'm in Australia. Yeah. Jack gets cooler and cooler by the minute. Jack, I want to be just like you when I grow up. <laughs> At Christmas time, you get to be Santa Claus. That's just awesome, just a bro. sec, I'll start up my garage band. <laughs> so I got yeah. another question for Adam. Uh, from the guy behind me, uh, where can people get your DVD online, and uh, where can people find you? Where they, where you're playing, and where you're performing, and where you're not performing, and you know. Yeah, the DVD you can go to our website uh, www.milehighfilm.com, and I have performances all over the state of Florida over the next two months. I'll be in St. Augustine, Cocoa Beach, Daytona, Orlando. Wow. Um, February 27th is the first one. Then you guys are down in Florida. And then in April, I do a tour around the Southeast. So it's going to be fun. When are you going to come up to Canada? I'm excited to get back on stage. I haven't been on stage in a little while now. I'm excited to get back up there. You have to come up to Canada. I would love to. Yeah. Somebody told me that there's a comedy club up there that has vaporizers on every table. Uh -huh. Is that true? Yep. That's, I believe. Yeah. Yep. I need to the play that club. The under, I think it's the Underground Comedy Club. Uh, that's uh, Joanne's place, I think, down in Toronto. I think. Yeah, that's a buddy of mine... Um, a friend of mine from Florida played for the uh, Argonauts up there in the Canadian League. Okay. And and he was telling me he's from Jacksonville. He's like, man, they got vaporizers on every table at this comedy club. <laughs> wait, wait, so wait, like wait. A cool city. Back friend, up friend a second. Canadian, right? Back up a second. Did you just say an Argonaut, one of our Argonaut football players, smokes pot? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, back up a second now. Come on now, Adam. <laughs> it's not the NFL. It's the yeah, CFL. It's amazing that people Can think Canada that it's a little more accepted. I, I want that people think that marijuana affects your performance, and you look at all the elite athletes that smoke weed constantly. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 I wish. I honestly wish we could get somebody, a professional athlete, on the show who has enough balls to stand up for what they believe in and to talk about it so that people actually can hear words as opposed to, no, there goes a $50 million guy right there and he smokes pot. Go get him. Yeah. What about Ross Rig Rigliati? He sells it now. Okay. Sign him up. Get him on the show. He's, he's, <laughs> doesn't he, didn't he open up his uh, dispensaries in uh, Whistler? Uh, is that the? I don't know. He's the one that lost his gold for <laughs> snowboarder. Snowboarder. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Michael said that he's a snow. A snow. Uh, he's the snowboarder yeah. that lost his gold. Yeah. If you start uh, <laughs> drug testing snowboarders at the Olympics for weed, you're gonna end up with like the 50th best guy in the world getting the gold. I can't yeah. say snowboarders, oh, but I can say didgeridoo. do. <laughs> Well, the FBI and the CIA, they just posted a thing that they are going to have to waive the uh, drug test because all the top uh, computer hackers that they oh, need Yeah, they're to all hire, potheads, yeah. Yeah, they're all potheads. Yeah. And so they, they half of them smoke pot on the job yeah. if they want anything. <laughs> yeah. 
Companies should start drug testing for weed, and if they don't have weed in their system, they can't work there. I would. You know what? Right. If, if I had a business, every fucking employee would have to smoke pot. I wouldn't hire anybody that didn't. And that, and then eventually somebody who wanted to work for me wouldn't like that, and they'd sue me for that. I ran a, I ran a shop that we worked on industrial equipment, and I used to send them out to smoke a joint when they were having too hard of a time trying to get something done. They go out and smoke a joint, come in, and figure it out immediately. Right yeah, there's certain jobs that would definitely help. I edited the film high, that's for sure. It was a lot easier getting through it that way. It opens up your creative mind you know, to a certain degree, and um, yeah. you're more detail oriented. You can kind of see the big picture. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, it allows you to think outside the box so you can see everything faster. Your brain works faster. Everything's clearer, especially with me, with MS. I've got what's called brain fog, or I should have, but most times I'm pretty clear-headed thought. Actually, pretty much all the time, I'm pretty clear-headed thought. You know what? i got to say, with like, uh, what, how, on an average, what do you smoke a day, Marcel? Or and, and uh, ingest and all that. What do you think? Uh, about a pound? on average, on average, thirty grams a day. So about okay. now today. I I was was licensed through Doctor Cameraman's for twelve, and when he gave me that, I went, huh? I can't even do that on a week, <laughs> you know. But then I quickly found that when I got actually got my pink piece of paper, it was only three grams. You know, it's not enough. It's it's not wow. enough. An ounce a day, that is wild. I guess because it's just you're adjusting it. I, I can't wrap my head around that number. That's that, wild. That's what I was uh, getting at. It, it, it's not, most people think and they say, whoa, I know people that are uh, 120, 130 grams a day. And yet they don't, in, they don't smoke at all. They vape and they, they ingest it. So you have to concentrate it. So you need a lot to do that. You guys can have- explain that. We have patients that don't uh, don't even decarboxylate it. They wait until the plant's flowering, and then it's well into flowering, and then they cut the whole plant down and run it through a juicer. Yep. At and some point, though, is there a limit to a certain point to where it could become toxic for you, or is it impossible to overdose on it? It's pretty much no. impossible to overdose from. Is that safe it's to say? You know it's what? impossible to overdose from because your body's already producing a lot of the cannabinoids in it. I just, saw, I just saw an article, though, Marcel, that said, and I've experienced this a little bit too much, uh, 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 and, you know, the heart starts going, you can actually get, Heart palpitations and stuff like that, and it's it's an anxi- an anxiety feeling. I just saw an article about it, and I I did the testing for it. Okay, a, a few years back, yep. and, and because I was talking to my doctor, because I was noticing when I increase the dosages, if the, the or change strains, yes, made a new batch with a different strain, and it was kind of like starting over. So it was something I had to get used to, but I was concerned about the heartbeat thing. So I went and I wore a, a, one of those monitors for 24 hours, and we measured every time I did an ingested dose or smoked anything. And what we found is almost every time the heart increase was about 15 beats per minute, but the blood pressure decreased. And what we figured out was happening is the veins were opening up and allowing more blood flow. Okay. Because the veins were opening up, it allowed more room. The blood pressure decreased, so the heart was compensating it for adding I, more blood flow. I've so that's why your eyes to, get red when you smoke. Yeah, I've actually had to run to the hospital because of that. I thought I was having a heart attack, and that's exactly what she said it was. Yeah, so the 10 to 15 beats per minute is fine if you know it's coming. The problem is if you, you don't, don't know that it's coming yeah. and it hits, then like, what the fuck? anybody with anxiety disorders or, yeah. or anybody not even thinking about it, would start to panic, yep. and that can lead to way more serious complications. When really all you need to do is throw on some Pink Floyd and grab a bag of chips. That's what we were doing before the show. <laughs> yeah, you're saying it has zero impact on your heart whatsoever. The yep. weed has it zero impact. Doesn't affect your heart. And actually, there's a new study out. I just saw it, that it reduces the chance for stroke. Yes, I just posted that just like a few hours before the show. I think that's probably where I saw it. Well, probably. That's cool. We've had a lot of really cool news happening up here recently, and I think that the best one is, what do you think of our licensed producer, Rico?
was because it was 4% stronger than THC. Can you, can you THC. repeat that? Back up a sec, because you just you flizzled out there for a sec. Oh, what's, sorry. what's it again? We had a licensed producer in Canada recall a batch. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because it was testing, it independently testing at 4% higher THC. Than it should have been. What do they do with it then? <laughs> I'll take it. They, you know what? No, so, what they do with it, Health Canada makes them destroy it. No, really? they're just going to take it, bring it back, repackage it, and, and relabel it as something else and sell it as a stronger strain for another five bucks a gram. Are you serious? Oh, why not? That would be the, the sensible thing to do. But I don't think so in reality. I'm sorry, but I'm thinking is. like a business person, and that's exactly what I would do as a business. Yeah, well, yeah you're right. Right? Hey, Jack, hey Jack let me ask you a question. If me yeah. and you ever go somewhere, would you smuggle some weed for me inside of your ass to get it on the airplane? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it wouldn't be much good after if you do me a lot of good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was afraid Jack was going to explain is that it was taking butter and then rubbing it on a, a big vibrator and shoving that up there to get it into it. So. <laughs> That's why I needed to know how we made his suppositories to make sure there wasn't like really big suppositories. I, okay, but if somebody has cervical cancer or something like that, that you need to get it up there. That's exactly how it's delivered. If if you have no other means. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would I would volunteer. Uh, so there there's so many ways to deliver this stuff. But that's a, to me there. That's there, actually one of the best ways, it's up isn't it? Post. Gentlemen, what? Just get, just fix up your spouse now. <laughs> Preventative medicine and lube all at the same time. There you go. Have you guys gotten to the age where you've had the prostate exam thing yet? Is that something that all guys have to do at some point? I don't even worry about it. I have it's to not, go. It's not a can't. There's cancer is not of a concern of mine. Trust me, there is much worse things than cancer in my mind. It seems to me that it's crazy that. That we can test all these things in the human body with a million different technologies we develop from X-rays, all these different things. But to figure out whether you have prostate cancer, somebody's got to shove their finger up your ass. It seems a little archaic, doesn't it? We can't we can't improve that at all. <laughs> there's there's supposedly could there's supposedly people working on a blood test for it, which I would think would be a lot more or less invasive. With my luck, that'll come out like the day after I have to have it done. You're looking forward to it, though. Like. I'm definitely you're getting, not looking forward you're, you're, to it. You've got this fixation on Jack's ass. Yeah. <laughs> and now and you're looking forward to to trying out some positive <laughs> suppositories. I, say, uh, <laughs> I do I do a pro I do a pro gay marriage bid in my stand up and I say, Now look, I've never had sex with a guy and I never will because I wasn't born that way. But I have gotten thousands of hand jobs from a guy. I love that joke, <laughs> dude. <laughs> this guy. Yeah, I love that joke. That one got me. <laughs> I, was, I was like, fun. no, he didn't. <laughs> I'm glad you like that out because you almost cut that out of the movie. We're like, fuck it, let's put that in there. Really? Yeah. That's a good one. You should. Let, you're good to leave it in there. Cool. Yeah, we were debating it. We wanted to be kind of a timepiece, and with this movement happening now, and then like gay marriage is such a big issue in the states too. Mm -hmm. We want the movie to kind of hold up if you watch it ten, twenty years from now. See, I plan on watching the movie Sunday because there'll be snow in here, so I'll just send it to the TV and watch it there. Yeah, what do you guys do when it snows all day? I guess just why you smoke so much weed, huh? Shit, what? there's nothing else to do. Two Netflix. words. Two words. Chrome go cast. Shovel. It's snowing. Go <laughs> yeah. shovel. Shovel. I, yeah. I had to go get shear pins for my snowboard tomorrow. So. Uh -oh. I've never shoveled snow in my entire life. Oh, you should come up and visit. <laughs> I could teach you really quick. Hey, Adam. I just don't get it. I, I, was, I was born and raised in Florida. I was born in Indiana, but was raised in Florida. And uh, to me, it's like you can live anywhere in your apartment complex, say the, the living room, the bedroom, but no, for four months a year, I'm just going to climb into that freezer, and I'm just going to stay in this part. It's warm everywhere else, but I'm going to stay right here. Florida is a wet warm, though. It's a very humid warm. It's very humid, yeah. yeah. It's, it's I like, like it. I it's, like the sticky warm. Yeah, see, I, like the I can't do that yeah. with my MS. I yeah. can't do the humidity. You'd be better off in California. Hey, Adam, how many times did the guy actually say motherfucker? I counted you know, 19. It was 19 was the yeah, total. That's what I counted. <laughs> he was great. We actually caught back up with him at the premiere. We're like, man, you got to be there. And um, 
super cool guy. He was out of the premiere, and and uh, he's a very entertaining character. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. And did 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 what I think is Doug? Did he get busted? There was a Who's guy. That? There was a guy. You know, you're that, ruining this whole movie for us. No, I'm not. No, it's he was. These were like <laughs> jokes he was doing with these people. He was worried he was going to get busted or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, he was, uh, you know, he just kept him out. I was interviewing a guy on the street, and he goes, hey, what are you guys filming for? Yeah. And I said, we're doing a documentary on marijuana legalization. And then he busts out into a song right away, <laughs> and then and then he just proceeds to go on this rant about why it should be legalized. And he said, motherfucker, 19 times in a row. But it was very poignant. He's like, and you can eat this motherfucking tree, and you can smoke this motherfucking tree, and you make clothes <laughs> on this motherfucking tree, and that's a threat to those motherfuckers. Yes. Yeah. It was hilarious. I like the truth. It was kind of like yeah. watching uh, Samuel L. Jackson. We thought we thought that was fun because you know one minute we're interviewing like a distinguished you know politician or doctor or lawyer, and then next minute we're talking to this guy on the street, and they're all <laughs> saying the same thing in their own unique way. So we thought that was kind of fun. You know what? Yeah. That's very pertinent because that's what happens. I find. I mean, I talk to people from all different walks of life, and and so does Jack, and so does uh, Marcel daily, and. Everybody's story, although different, is the same. Yep. For sure. Yeah, we kind of makes you realize that everybody's one, and you know, it brings yep. people together, which I think is cool. Well, even it's it's and it's and it's not just like we're here because we're th- three patients, okay? But it's 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 really not just about like Marcel says. Everybody's a patient. I mean, if you're stressed out instead, and and you don't drink, so you smoke a joint. Uh, yeah. Or you have a drink. I mean, some people have a drink. Some people smoke a drink. Some people take a pill. You know, people uh, medicate with alcohol. Yep. Sure but they the do. They've been doing it for is, years. In our town, the average age for an alcohol-induced coma is thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. Pot don't no. kill you. Alcohol does. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen anybody in dying from cannabis overdose ever. Well, except except for that guy that got squished by a, a hundred thousand pounds or something like that in his back seat. I've heard about that in a car wreck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The first death related. Well, no, the first death really related to cannabis was the first cop that shot somebody for smoking the joint. You know what? That's very yeah. very true, dude. That's very true. For sure. And you know yeah, what? It's a shame. It's, it's <clears throat> something that generations down the road are going to look back and laugh, you know, and just think it's just so ridiculous. Kind of like how you look back at alcohol prohibition. But eventually, you just, you know, if you're not hurting anybody, everybody kind of needs to mind their own business and let people do what they're going to do. And on that note, I got a song here by the Killin' Time Band called It Doesn't Make Sense, and we'll be back. This is the 420 Radio Show. We're live on LifestyleRadio.net. Come on in the chat room. Say hi to Lori and Marcel, and uh, we'll be right back. (coughs) Excuse me. Back.
Dialradio.ca. I hope I didn't sound too nervous there. <laughs> and we, on that note, we're back. Put that tip up there and just we <laughs> pull the tip out quick and then hold it for as long as you can. <laughs> I'm leaving this interview immediately if that bag reaches behind. Oh, God. And we're yeah, back. Yeah, okay. I said it once, I've said it a million times already tonight. I want to be just like you when I grow up, man. Oh, boy. The man has a vaporizer that he never turns off. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's why it still works. So if anybody from Volcano is listening, Jack has been... How long has it been on, Jack? Eight years. Eight years it's been on. That's He's crazy. never shut it off. You need to talk to that man. <laughs> hey, never, never ending ending vaporizer. My, my friend, uh, I don't know, you guys know Stephen Bacon? No. He's very instrumental in the movement a uh, long, long time ago. Anyways, this has been on for 11 years. <laughs> wow. And he's never turned it off. <laughs> no. That's <laughs> wow. it's, do you, do you have it set so that like there's a bag filled all the time on it? What's that? Do you have it set up so there's always a bag filled on it all the time? You can just walk by and grab a bag and go. No, no, it's just, it's on, so you just go over and go boom. You push how the how long does a bag last? It'll last you what about five ten minutes? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching Jack on the video monitor, and Jack goes through a through five or ten bags a minute. No, no, what I was getting at is. I'm going to turn on the video now so I can see Jack and Adam. And uh, uh, what I'm getting at is how long, like if you put your bag down, how long would it be okay to use? Oh. Uh, da, 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 da. Probably about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Then the vapor uh, dissipates it. It collects on the side of the bag. And what, what temperature do you use? Because every, every vapor like, lounge I've like been into... Every it's vapor not, lounge I've been into has it literally set at 420. What? Yep. No, yep. that just burns it. Of course it does. Of course it does. Every vaporizer, every vapor lounge that I've been into has had their vaporizers set at 420. Now, I don't know if they set them at that or some kids come in and they're like, oh, let's put it on 420. <laughs> you yeah. know, uh, What's the vapor lounge why? like? How does that work? You go in, you sit down, you pay your five bucks, and you sit down and you smoke your dope. And you bring your own weed? You bring your own you, weed. and You, can you bring use your own weed, and then you use their vaporizers. And that's that's common? They have those? Where are those at? Uh, Nova Quebec, Ontario, I think Manitoba. That's awesome. Saskatchewan, Alberta, British Columbia. Uh, in one way or another, there's a lot of them. Quebec doesn't around. have any really any dispensaries or vapor lounges or anything, eh? Yes, they do. Do they? Oh yeah. I've always been I've always been under the impression that the Quebec uh, community really doesn't exist. No. Okay. The Quebec community does really exist. Okay. Good. I'm glad. I just um, don't speak French. Yeah, yeah it's, just, it, it, because it's always in French, you probably yeah. wouldn't realize it. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I do try and I I love the the new. I have the translator thing on my my browser, right? So I can go and I read articles. You know, Spanish, French, doesn't matter what language. I actually, and then I'll post them. So. Oh, New Brunswick's got one. Do they? Yeah, we should we should get Fabian on sometime too. Sure. Um, sure. He's the one with uh, marijuana for trauma. Working okay. with the veterans. Oh yes, yes. But he's yes. hard hard guy to track down. Three thirty three. Yeah, we've got a lot of vapor lounges around here, Adam. That if oh, you came oh. up to visit and help me shovel snow, I would show you vapor lounges. <laughs> three or four. You wouldn't need a vapor lounge if you went over to his place to shovel I snow. I could be a vapor lounge myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I think that's going to be the future. You guys see movies, you puff before the film or during the movie, and. Restaurants, nightlife, like bars and stuff. I think that's going to be really cool. You know, I over the summer, uh, when was it? it? Actually, December 1st, I was lucky enough to be standing in line in Toronto getting ready to go and see Cat Stevens, or Yusuf as he goes to, by now. And I tell you, man, I, I went to the dispensary and I got what was called a whoopee cookie. And it was two grams of cookie. And I ate it. 
and I was standing there talking to my mom and my sister while we were waiting in line for three fucking hours. And I'm like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> my sister and my mom are just looking at me, looking around. <laughs> it, are no joke. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, How was Cass Stevens? Was he good? Uh, I was in tears from the minute he walked on stage to the minute he left. Why is that? You just, he was that good? He was that good. And he, this is a, a, a voice that I have been hearing since I can remember. Sure. You know, I grew up on Yeah, me music. too, but I wouldn't have been in tears, I don't think. I was just so happy. I was with my mom and my sister, and we were having such a good time. And That's cool, man. You know, That's really cool. And then We I have a good outdoor concert coming up. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Where? A ACDC in New Brunswick on Magnetic Hill. Yeah, they're actually... Yeah, this is their final tour or something? Yeah. Yeah, and well, they're ending their tour through Canada, I guess. So. And and they were on the Grammys last weekend, and I don't know his name, but the drummer that's replacing uh, is uh, the drummer that re is, uh, a little bit of the guy who's leaving. The guy who's replacing him was playing with them on the Grammys. Now, what are you making there, uh, Jack? You cutting up some apples for us? No, he's cutting up some mango to. Okay, now that's a good, down on. look. Look, I, there's a good question here. I'm going to open up you Jack's video. The floor, yes or no? Does it really work? Yes, it does. It does because I've tried it and I was like, I don't remember if it worked or not. <laughs> eat, eat the mango about 30 minutes before you smoke it. Okay. And it'll open up the pathways. Then uh, chow down, or make mango and juiced cannabis smoothies. Oh, dude. Frozen mango juice. Oh, 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 God. Yeah, I got to yeah, get a not? juicer. I need a juicer. Anybody who has any suggestions about juicers, come on, hit it at me. I just get, got a new one, but I haven't tried it yet. Get a Nutribullet. Well, I was going to say, are they any good? I was mm. I was looking at the... I have a Magic Bullet that has a juicer attachment. Yeah? For, uh, what are they years. worth? What are they worth? And it works great, but it's still just small amounts. Um... Adam and is gazing at harvest. Jack eating. <laughs> yeah. After after a harvest of of and uh, juicing all of the fan leaves and things. Yes. Um, I need a bigger juicer. Now, uh, when you say juicing, do you just throw yep. the plant in there, or do you throw the plant in there? Some flavoring, some other stuff. Like, what do you do? Is I it... just extract pure juice. Okay. So it comes out almost like a blackish green. Okay. Chlorophyll filled yuck. Yes. And then I can freeze that. Yes. Or I can mix it up with other juice to try and kill the taste. But um, if you're, that sounds like an awful lot of even more chlorophyll than you would get out of baking it. That's why I don't do it. I don't drink it. Okay. Or if I drink it, it's got to be so diluted for me not to get that chlorophyll. We made a tea recently. Where we but we you want the chlorophyll? Who does? Everybody. Why? If I want chlorophyll, I'll go eat some seaweed. Uh, chlorophyll is is one of the most important things of the plant. Oh, I and I eat plenty of of green vegetables, so I get a lot of chlorophyll. But but that's the extracted the chlorophyll from cannabis. Yeah, is the gag reflex, yeah. and it can't be done. That only happens in a couple of people, though, and unfortunately, you're one of those. I had a cancer patient that same thing happened to her. Uh, that's that's because you're one of that's you're one of those people. It's it's uh, unfortunate, but that's how it is. Oh yeah, I know. Well, that's why it's important to say, guys, that it is patient specific. That's why it's mm -hmm. so important. And the, these arguments that people have about this wonderful plant, it's so important to know that it is strain specific and patient specific what works for one you give somebody who's not hyperactive in any way Ritalin and they're going to be bouncing off the fucking walls you give Ritalin to me who has ADHD and I'm going to be sitting here like uh huh yeah uh huh give everybody cannabis as a kid and they don't need Ritalin well yes yes of course I mean I wouldn't put my kids on Ritalin now uh, if if that was my no, you mean even if, even if they're not hyperactive or anything, give them cannabis. It'll still make them smarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you're not allowed to do that, unfortunately, are you? 
No, because we live in a society. Yeah, they, uh, they say juicing right. is really good. Juicing the leaves is really good, and yeah, the seeds have a lot of fiber in them. The seeds are extremely beneficial because from that you get hemp seed oil, which is all omega-3 oil. So if you start ingesting hemp seed oil on a regular basis, every time you smoke a joint, it's going to affect you even stronger again because it will have omega-3 lipids to attach to, which will actually open up more of the CB1 and CB2 receptors. Now, what 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 is the best... So I mix concentrated cannabis extract oil with hemp seed oil to attach it to all omega-3s and then add liquid vitamin D to that. Yeah, I put that in my smoothie. Why Why would... Uh, now, the liquid vitamin D, what what plant is that? What What is that? What... What is that? Yeah. Liquid vitamin D? Yeah. It's D drops. It's it's basically vitamin D in a liquid form that I can mix with the other two liquids okay. to make capsules. No. But it's it's extracted from sheep's wool. Okay, that's what I was where, where does it come from? That's what I was getting. Yeah, I vitamin vitamin D comes from the sun. Okay. Um, so it's good for people but who don't in the winter, go out. We get I mean, I'm housebound for the winter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unless you're shoveling well, not much sun. Um, what are the summers like in Canada? The summers nice up there? Beautiful. Uh, yeah, and 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 oh, sometimes right there. about as muggy as Florida too. But we've got yeah. the same. Yeah. Our summer is about like what you got. But you know, last time I was in Florida, um, I was just after I guess Katrina or something like that, and uh, we were there about a month later. And it was barren. There was nobody around. They didn't even have the heater on in the pool or anything. And the weather, but the weather was horrible. I remember going down as a kid, man, and it was like, yeah. Now it's like, hey, look at all the old people. Yeah, <laughs> I love the heat. I like it. I like. I like to be around water, and it can't be hot enough for me. I like it. it it's actually too cold right now for me in Florida, and it's like forty-five, fifty degrees outside right now. That's freezing to me. So tell me, since you're down in the States, enlighten us Canadians here on what exactly is happening in Florida right now, because I know we've had Ted Corliss on the show, who's uh, an attorney down there in in Florida, and we've had uh, Steve Burke on the show as well, who was running for mayor. I don't know, if is he running again, or was he running? I don't know. Uh, um, Yeah, you're talking about Florida just as a whole, in in Florida, how we're kind of a fucked up state, is that what you mean, what's happening in Florida? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I, I mean, think the, basically what's happening is is because you can go anywhere you want and get pills. Pills are yep. pain, pain pills. Opium is legal in Florida. If you want to see what happens to an area when opium becomes legal, come check out Florida. I have this is, no idea. You know, from Casey Anthony to you know everything, all the stand your ground and shooting people and cops being all crazy and people eating people's faces off and whatnot. Yeah, we got a little bit of everything down here. Wow, but. I just think it's like the opposite of Colorado. You go to Colorado and there's art and there's culture and there's peace and, and there's innovation. It's because everybody's smoking weed out there. And you're yeah. here and everybody's taking Oxycontin. You know, you're going to get people swiping bikes off of porches and all the other stuff that comes with the hard drugs. Yeah. That's what makes society run, man, that they thrive on that shit. I had a really cool frog that had a light on it on my front lawn like and somebody shit. stole it because they were on meth. Yeah, it's just you're not in your right mind, and nobody's ever, uh, you know, I know the joke I say on stage is nobody's ever smashed a, I say that al- marijuana's even safer than alcohol, so there's no such thing as marijuana poisoning, and nobody's ever smashed a bong and tried to stab somebody with it. So there's the, it's, there's drugs, and then there's the bad drugs. Yep. And weed is definitely not one of the I bad I, drugs. I, 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 no, I, weed's only a bad drug if you try and steal it from me. Why is it a drug? <laughs> Why is it a drug? I don't know. Yeah, that's a it's good not question. a drug. It's I a don't plant. Think it'd be a drug. It's not a drug. Yeah. Mushrooms it's aren't a drug. Both sides. I don't think it's a drug either. To me, a drug is something that you can become addicted to and that can kill you. That's what a dr- I think. Say no to drugs. I'm all against drugs. Okay, I agree. I don't think on the, it's a on, drug at all. On the whole addiction problem. thing, though, Adam. Okay, an addiction is something that you can't do without, and that can be anything. And the only reason that they say that cannabis is addicting is because it makes you feel fucking better. And if that yeah. makes me a fucking addict, okay, I'm okay yeah. with that. Well, like water's in addicting my case, for a run. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, you go for a long run, you want to drink some water, you're addicted to the water. Yeah, I'm, a, as long I'm as addicted to cannabis. Drug. 
I'm addicted I'm, to it. I I'm like se- to feel I'm better. I'm severely addicted to it. If I don't have it, I die. Yes. Yeah, we're all addicted to air. Everybody's addicted to air. There's a difference between the stuff that's addictive that is good for you and the stuff that's addictive that's, you know... When, when, I tried to come up with something... I tried to come up one time with something that was safer than cannabis. Meaning that you can't die from it, you can't get sick from it, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And nobody's ever come back to me with an answer yet on something that's safer than cannabis. Can't hey, say water drink because too much water, you die. You can die from drinking too much water. That's true. You can, yeah, you can overdose on water, but you can't overdose on cannabis. I fall asleep. Yeah, that's what would happen. But what was it that they come out oh. with in the report? You'd have to do sixteen hundred pounds in in ten minutes. There was actually an article this week, earlier in the week, about it, uh, and they. Um, I'm looking for it on my feedly here. Um, well, it's not an ounce a day, right, Marcel? It's not an ounce a day. When was yeah. it? Uh, so it's got to be more than that. That's amazing. I might have smoked an ounce in like a year or two. I got to <laughs> stop posting so much news, man. I can't find anything. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck was that? I have songs, things going off in my head. Something's <laughs> going on in my computer. That's okay. I'm just kidding. Hey, as long as Jack's pants are on, everything's fine. All right, Jack. While he's searching for that, while while Al's searching for that, I got a question for you. What was in your smoothie, and do you still drink your smoothie? Who me? Yeah, you. Yes, I do. I drink that smoothie every single day. That's What's in it? The most important thing. Uh, let's see. We got hemp hearts, pumpkin seeds, uh, sunflower seeds. Walnuts, uh, Brazil nuts, almonds, uh, half a lemon, uh, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, uh, slice of pineapple, uh, asparagus, spinach, wow, uh, parsley, and rock, arugula. 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 <laughs> um, and then I add uh, arugula. Hawthorn, ginseng. Alfalfa powder, apple fiber, uh, And you ginger. have this every day? Yes. Wow. Yeah, well, that took my... Except like a big batch of it type thing and... No, I, I, I squeeze that all into one, uh, my my Nutribullet. It all fits in there. I so you make I one... love my third Nutribullet. I wear them out, man. So you make, you make that and you have that and you, that's like your breakfast kind of thing. Yeah, right. it's whenever. It's you pretty much have everything that you need, and then I then I use uh, coconut water, right? Because uh, coconut water is actually so good, it can be in an emergency. It can be substituted for blood plasma, so it puts it's the proper pH that you need. Same, same with same with everything that's in that smoothie is is to keep me alkaline, because wow. uh, you're, like I said before, when you have cancer, you're acidic, and so when I checked what my pH was, I was at three point five, right? And uh, so I put this smoothie together because uh, what what happened is uh, they gave me this Basilicus clementi gurin and they injected it into my bladder to stimulate immune response. And uh, the response was my uh, body broke out into this rash, and I had this rash for over two years, and I saw three different skin specialists, and none of them knew their ass from a fucking hole in the ground. And I, I, here we go again. So when I come home and I took a picture and I went to another buddy of mine in the garage and hey, what's going on here? And he goes, holy fuck, Jack. He says, that rash. He says, those are acid burns. He says, everything touching you was burning me like acid. The water, my clothes touching my skin, everything. So uh, I went online and got all these things that I needed to change my pH and I put that all together in a smoothie and, uh, like I said, I had that rash for two and a half years, and in 14 days it was gone. Dang. 14 days. Yeah. Wow. So, so I what, don't have a lot of faith in the medical system. As far as I'm concerned, the medical system is a complete failure. I mean, I don't understand how they became doctors and they don't know what the endocannabinoid system is. I mean, you can't live without it. I, I, it's, it just amazes me how it was purposely kept away from them. They were not taught it in the story. That and was that, the that was the TB. Uh, 
And that so was, that, and, and to me, I mean, the Chinese have been treating this endocannabinoid system for 10,000 years, and North America only discovered it in 1994. Give me a fucking break. Yeah. Yeah. You know, go yeah. fuck off. That yeah. was your tuberculosis diagnosis, wasn't it? What's that? That was your, the rashes on your your skin. That was when you were diagnosed with TB, wasn't it? No, that was what the, my immune system response gave you TB. No, 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 no. They use that's what the Silicus clementi gurin is. Is the tuberculosis virus? Uh-huh. They, they injected that into my bladder. Right, uh, to, to stimulate an immune response, and so that was the immune immune response that happened was what. Was that rash that broke out, and it showed that I'm acidic, and nobody wow. got that. Nobody got that. How old are you, Jack? Sixty-two. That's cool, man. That's really cool. All right. Yeah, you got to figure out what's best for you. You can't always listen to doctors, that's for sure. If you know better than the doctors. You do your own thing. That's pretty cool. I mean, when when my side effects were, I got off sixteen medications and. My blood pressure was so high, I used to get bloody noses. It was always 180 over 100 all the time, constantly. Eh? Now my blood pressure runs regular to 116 over 72. My diabetes, I couldn't. I was on 2,000 milligrams of metformin. I was maxed out, so I was going on to the needle. So that was my next step with this stuff, and now my blood sugar is 5.4. It's perfect you're all not, the you're, time. You don't have to take the metformin now? No, I take nothing. Awesome. What's your pH now? My my pH now runs perfect. I, because of my smoothie that I have, so I'm running always a constant 7.4. So my pH is good. Perfect. Yeah, my pH is fantastic. You can't adjust your blood pH, right? So that's just that's a constant. So all you can do is when when you uh, when you eat is it fluctuates all the time by by what you're putting in. Uh, but uh, because of the, the the meter that I that I use for my plant, so I when I, when I because I still check my blood for my blood sugar, so I give her a good poke and then I fill up my meter and I can check my blood pH and it's it's constant all the time. Use using pool strips to check your pH. Uh, no, I, no, I have a meter. Oh, do you? Yeah, for my plants. <laughs> That's right? funny yeah. though. Yeah, so that's what I do. I check my blood with that too. So whatever, if you have liquid, you can check it with that. So it's it's a good one. Cool. But nice, yeah, nice so, meter. So that diet is very important, and, and even it doesn't matter what disease it is that you're that you're fighting, eh? Because your immune system is eighty percent in your guts, eh? And that's where it all starts off is in your guts. Hmm. You I've know? done away with all the processed shit. Absolutely. Uh, if, if it not comes out in of the if box, it comes comes in a box that you throw in the oven it doesn't get in my house so I don't eat that crap how yeah, guilty do you think I feel right now because <laughs> that's what, what I that? how guilty do you think I feel right now because that's what I had for dinner <laughs> sorry I eat anything <laughs> I didn't eat better my wife's into all that nutrition and probiotics I, and gut health and I wish I that. I wish I, I I did eat better to the point where I'm going to start looking there's a service that that Brings their home frozen home cooked meals. They're not processed food. They're hand cooked meals. And, oh yeah. And uh, there's a service up here that del- comes up here every two weeks for the ladies in the building here. And I've got their menu. I've looked at their website, and and their their meals average around between five and seven bucks. Now my philosophy is is okay. Yeah, I can spend twelve bucks on something at the store. And it'll be processed, or I can get a home cooked meal that's not yeah. processed. Like they're geared to diet for diabetes, for type two diabetes, and and for my weed issues, and and um, they've even got desserts and stuff like that. So it's like Weight Watchers stuff, but it's homemade. It's not processed. Right? Hey, quick question: If you're in Canada and your heater goes out, do you just die? Is that what happens, or what? What do you do then? I shrivel up a into a mushroom. That gives me an excuse for dabbing, then I can light up my torch. <laughs> <laughs> I just run out to my hut out back to my I have igloo. A generator. <laughs> you have a generator, Jack? Yeah, I got a generator. Yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm seriously building. thinking of building a igloo in the back. That's crazy. I don't know how you guys do it. Have you always lived up in that area? Barnum I've raised? lived everywhere. 
But I and, but I was born here and I came back here. That's cool. I gotta check it out in the summertime. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to that comedy club with the vapes. That's gonna be fun. Well, if you come up here, you let me know, eh? Because I'm just outside yeah, of cool. Toronto, so. Yeah, but sure, if you man. come across the club manager there, give him my info for sure. Oh yes, I will. I will. Yeah. And if you're ever brave enough to come to the East Coast, oh, the East Coast know. is to die for, dude. If you've got, we know where go. you can get lobster. Oh yeah, oh, fuck. <laughs> I would love it. I've never been to that part of the world. I haven't been to the Northeast United States either. That's that's one part of the world I've never been. So I would love to go out in that area. That'd be cool. I used to speak Maine's legal. Uh, They're what? legal for patients. They've yeah, been legal for a hard. long time. Actually, all of the Northeast is legal. Fourteen years, has man. Been. We got mountains there, and we got mountains over in Denver. It's something's coming off of those mountains. People figure it out. Right, mountain good juju for the mountains. Yeah. <laughs> Do they are they uh, reporting uh, that you're hearing down in the states and that about uh, uh, the problems that are happening with the outdoor grows and stuff like that? I've been seeing articles and. The no, I'm not, I mean, I'm not even sure I've followed that too much. So as long as my weed guy doesn't get arrested, I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> lots of environmental issues attached to mass production outside, unfortunately. But it's been growing outside for how long? Pardon me? I said, how long has it been growing outside? Oh, over 10,000 years. Yeah, so somebody's got All it over right. the planet. Yeah, you just dirt and some seeds. That's all you need. Yep. Yeah, and, and that, grow it in a bucket of mud in your backyard if you want. I think Florida would grow really well. See, everything's so green down here, and it's, it's just flat and green everywhere you go. A lot of rain, a lot of in sunshine. The, in the late seventies and early eighties, we used to get what was called Florida ditch weed. Uh huh. Yep. Which was grown in Florida, um, just outdoor indica strain. Yep. But it served its purpose. Is, is Florida too hot for weed? Is it not the ideal situation? Uh, no. Too too many stupid cops in Florida. I think is the biggest problem. Yeah. Florida. Oh, Florida, yeah. Now yeah, you can't go Florida's to Florida, got, Marcel. Pardon me. <laughs> I said now Florida's you can't go to Florida. Different weather changes or weather patterns that can disrupt growing seasons pretty yeah. quick because yeah. they're hurricanes. They get all the storms coming off the Gulf, right? Um, yeah. So, They've got to try and survive hurricane season, no doors and things like that. But ideally, Sudi, you can grow sativas and, and both sativas and indicas and all the hybrids in Florida. Uh, well, they've been growing uh, fruit there for eons. So. Oh, yeah. How many? Just how- gotta, they got to grow in such a way that they can protect their plants from hurricanes and things like that. Because remember, in flowering season is the hurricane season. Yeah. So you get yeah. all the big yeah. buds sitting at the tops of the plants, and then the wind comes through and takes them all off. Them Do off. freezes kill a plant? Will freeze kill kill a cannabis plant? <laughs> it can. Um, we have a lot of growers here, outdoor growers, that wait until after the first frost so to harvest stop. their plants. How long does it take to go from seed to you can harvest something off of it? Um, can be. It depends on the strain, really. Because you can have auto flowers that can be done in 45, 55 days. Um, from, a, from a seed to, to from a seed to harvest. Wow, forty five days? That's crazy. Forty five. I've got some auto flower seeds here that I'll, I'll do this year that should do sixty days. From Dang, that's crazy. Germination to harvest. Now, but um, I've always heard uh, that auto flowers aren't that great. And no, autoflower is kind of cool. Um, and there's different autoflower strains. So you have to look at what you're getting for a strain, too, oh, when right. it comes to autoflowers. But all the autoflowers were with, bred with Ruderalis, which came from Siberia. So it flowers without having to worry about the light. So it's not, it's not photosensitive. It's time sensitive. So it has a preset determined time that regardless what the growth is, of the plant and vegetation, it's going to start flowering, and it's going to finish within this amount sixty of days. Yeah. days. Yeah. So you could have your flowering period could end up being um, thirty days out of a sixty-day grow. So you got a month of, of flowering, and then your plant is finished. The drawback with autoflower is you don't get a big crop off of it. 
when you're doing it outdoors, you see the big difference because outdoor plants, I mean, you can easily pull a half a pound to a pound off of an outdoor plant. Yeah. You'd be struggling to get an ounce. Not that I've ever off done. Off of an auto flower. How much, how much weed will you get off of, say that it is a 60 day harvest, how much weed do you actually get off of that plant in those 60 days? Um, depending on the strain, summer's like an ounce, maybe two ounces. Gotcha. So one plant can give you an ounce every 60 days. Yeah. So okay. you can set up a grow with, say, 25 plants, um, start them growing, 30 days later start another 25 plants. Yeah and do it that way, then every month you're harvesting 25 mm -hmm. plants. That's interesting. It's cool. I like how you can use everything from the plant, too. The stalk can be used for ropes and twines. and you know, Oh, you can, you can even make root tea. Eat the seeds. I think it's really cool. You can build houses with it. It's crazy what you can do with the plant. Root the root tea system is, uh, is also beneficial because you yeah. can grind up the roots, make a tea with that. Yeah, and it's very common. The roots don't have THC, but they're full of CBD and all of the other cannabinoids. Yeah, yeah. If you look at if you look at the world's problems, from hunger to there's nowhere to live to no clothes, and then you look at what the plant can do, it can do all those things. You can eat it, you can wear it, you can build houses with it. There's so think, there's no other plant on the planet that's <laughs> like cannabis. For what it can do, and, and well, basically what it can do. There's no other plant on the planet like it. Yeah, it's crazy. And well, they never have to cut another tree down. Never have to dig another fucking oil well. Yeah. Hey, yeah. they yeah. never have to pick any more cotton, and it's medicine. Yes, yeah. yeah. it's crazy. And All of it's the also above. a food source because I mean, it's yeah. nothing to throw so throw some nice fresh trim into your salad. Yeah. Like, Put a uh, a tablespoon of decarb cannabis in my smoothie. Uh, yeah. More. Yeah. Yeah. You can't you can't go wrong with the plant. Even if you accidentally shove it up your ass, it still ends up being good for you. <laughs> or do it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and and on that note, I got another song from Addy Lane. We're gonna take one last break here. And we'll be I'll back. I'll do for an ass joke. <laughs> and and Adam's gonna try and come up with some more ass jokes. And this is the 420 Radio Show. Come on in the chat room if you're not already there and uh, join us for a chat. We'll be back in a minute or two. <coughs>
Friday night. Come and hang out with us. Marcel is here with me every week, and we have different guests like Jack and um, this other guy here named Adam. And uh, Adam is a uh, filmmaker, comedian, stand-up comedian. Was that what you would call yourself? Yeah. That's your day job? That's the day job, yep. It's fun. I get high during the week and tell jokes on the weekend. You can get high during the week and tell jokes. I like that. That works. Yeah, it's fun. I'm enjoying it. Have you ever bombed it, on stage, dude? I've had some shows that have not been good, but it's more so just because you know it's not a very big crowd. It's you know, so there, it's crazy. Some nights that, yeah. you tell jokes where you know I, the second time I did stand up, I forgot what I was saying. Yes, my second time <laughs> up, I can admit it was a rough outing, but um, we work out the kinks in the early stages, but um. I have had sets where it's like, man, this joke did great last night, and then tonight it's not doing anything. So it's just you never know. Now, is is it? I, like I said earlier, I I just watched your movie the other day. Is is your stand up when you get up on stand up? Is that the same as it is, or is it much different? It's similar to that. I like to do. Um, I like to talk about real stuff. So I'll do like a six seven minute bit on on with marijuana the, legalization with the I'll TV do a five, and six everything. Minute bit on animals. I like to have like a topic and yeah. then just tell a series of jokes or stories within that topic and then move on to another topic. It's not like one liners, random one liners back and forth. And you use so the TV. A little bit of a that, flow to it. You use the TV in that for presentation and that in every show or. Yeah, I yeah. do. Yeah, we think it's cool. You know, the the nowadays people are so into visuals and everything, yeah. and, and texting and picture messaging, and and the the way of traditional stand up is the same way that kids get lectured by their college professors and 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 pastors and ministers up there talking. So why should you know the funny people be doing the same way that the boring people do? That's exactly so how I I thought of it too. I was like, this is like sitting in a classroom he's kind of telling a story about something serious but he's throwing in some some you know zingers every now and then right yeah i think i think this the society these days it's it's so you know multi-sensory and it's kind of a 21st century way of of, an, of bringing to the stand-up comedy so we like it and i write with my writing partner anthony hasham you know i write together and uh, he directed the film as well and he and i've been good buddies for a long time and so uh, he's the one timing up the slides behind me as I'm telling the jokes on stage. And wh- what other projects you got coming up? Well, we're filming a sequel to the film. We were out in Oregon for the the ballot measure out there, which passed, which was awesome. They became the third state to legalize weed, as you, yeah. I'm sure you guys know. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to go to California in 2016 and film out there. So we just want to keep showing up every two years and riding the wave and documenting and making it fun. Cool. Right on. I think that's going to be a big one, California. Once that passes, I think that's going to be a really big domino to uh, fall. That should have happened a few years ago, dude. And I'm kind yeah, of, you yeah, know, not. if they had done in California when they thought they were going to do it, like they did in Colorado, then California would have had $700 million to help them get out of fucking debt because they're still that's in exactly debt. That's exactly right. That's you know? exactly right. So. Yeah, they, we did, they did it two years too early. Oopsie. Yep. 
Oh, come on, Marcel. You're supposed to be on the buttons there, buddy. Here, I got it. Don't you worry. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, Where did you and Marcel meet? We've never met. We've never met. That's cricket. Yeah. I, I live in, in uh, the middle of nowhere. Yep. And That's I, cool. So you guys just do radio shows like you know, like remotes basically together? And I live in the middle of somewhere. <laughs> I'm also the communications director for the Medicinal Cannabis Patients Alliance of Canada. Good plug. Very cool. Which is a federally registered not-for-profit society. So, that's awesome, man. Very cool. Marcel is the guy that that uh, Canadian television calls to talk about cannabis. I and, like it, and, man. And Helping patients like out. That. That's cool shit, Marcel. Yeah. Are there certain types of cancer that is better than others to, to at curing? And well, Jack, what I Jack found out that too, when I got, first got online. sick is that healthy people don't help sick people. Yeah. No. As yeah. a sick person, I had to help start helping sick people. Yeah. And yeah. Then, and then you end the up. They would get help. Then you end up with sick friends, and then sick family members, and everybody's just sick around you, and then you just get sick of it. Yeah, you get sick of being sick all the time, yeah. but, yeah. but you just keep pushing. The the support system within the within the community. Is that of no other? On, That's cool. On, on, they're they're not saying anything. They know I'm not done yet. On many levels, but the bickering, and uh, throughout the cannabis community, throughout the whole world, the the bickering and the egos is what's fucking it up for the people who really need it. Seriously. And I'm yeah. glad you added that. Yeah, it's the infighting that is is making it so hard for us. I, I it, as a patient. Yeah. If I talking about within the weed community, there's people fighting. The the oh, people yeah. the people who patients turn to are fighting amongst themselves, not literally, but it, it it's this battle of egos yeah. that it, that's literally turned things into an East Coast West Coast rivalry. Be- because you've got court, ca- court cases going out in the East Coast, you've got court cases going out in the West Coast, and and so you've got different groups. Uh, what, what is it, the MMPR coalition out west? Yeah. Is that what it is? And then you've got the MMAR people here, uh, uh, and then you got the MM doodle do people over there, and it's like everybody's got their own ideas as what this should be. Nobody's willing because they're all activists. So nobody's willing to back down and say, "Hey, wait a minute. This is getting a little bit ridiculous." So patients are listening to the stupid doctors that they have on Nancy Grace show. Yeah. Okay. And they're listening to uh buddy down the road who thinks he knows everything there is to know about getting high or medicating, whichever way you want to put it. And it creates a lot of confusion between patients and those patients are getting th- tossed aside in some way because of this whole entrepreneurial thing that's going on in Canada and it's happening everywhere though and he was just trying to make money off of it is that what you're saying is that why uh, yeah yeah, so, yeah that's yeah, the, yeah. I mean money makes the world turn yeah. a few years ago I wrote a, a, a piece that uh, was published I think in California um and I called it the new war on drugs. And basically everything that I put then is coming true now um, and has been for quite some time. And that's the fact that the medical patients got to have it. The recreational patients were going to kick up a fight. And the profiteers were going to make a fortune. Prof- and nothing's changed. That's exactly what's happened. Yeah, it's the nice. recreational people have tried to... to basically stop helping out the medical patients because the medical patients kind of got covered but we're still being thrown under the bus because now the recreational side wants it too and you know what you know what's happening from that adam is that uh it's literally gone as far as that the recreational guy down the road that i uh you know that i call him whoever that is sure. the guy you get your weed down the road from okay uh um they've gotten to the point where they're not even wanting to deal with medical patients because we have a bullseye. The cops know I'm a medical patient. I walk into that guy's door down the road and then walk out and I got weed on me, then they know automatically 
You know what I mean? Like they, they yeah. and they are targeting that. Yeah. They are. On on grander scales, obviously, they're not worried about the nickel and dime guy. They're going after the guys that are, are you know. Sure. Yeah. I like to see the sales of weed go towards society. I think if you look how much money Budweiser makes on a quarterly average for their shareholders, what if what if the Budweiser of beer was something where everybody bought that same type of weed and it was just the number one weed seller? Imagine where all that money could go if it was a nonprofit selling that weed. I like to see something like that happen. But it won't happen, unfortunately. Why not? I would rather see it that cannabis gets removed from the drug schedules because it's neither toxic nor dangerous and be treated like carrots or lettuce. If you want to grow it in your backyard, you can. If you want to buy it at the grocery store, you can. If you want to grow it and sell it to the grocery store, then you get a commercial license to do it. Yeah, that's a good call. And that's that's the way it should have been always treated. Well, that's the way it was treated. Well, that's the way it was treated. And that's, <laughs> it was pushed. That's the way it was treated when it. George Washington was growing it on his family farm. That's how they did it. They taxed it. You had to go and get a ticket in order to grow it. But if you didn't grow it, you got fined. Right. In um, World War Two. They actually lifted the prohibition because they needed the rope. Because they needed, shit. they needed the hemp yeah. ropes, so they got farmers to grow hemp during World War and II. All, and all those uniforms were hemp as well, I believe, right? Yeah. If you got yourself a pair of Levi jeans that were made in the 1890s, they would be as comfortable today as they were the day they were made. That's cool. It was made of hemp back then. Yeah. When did they go from hemp to cotton? You know, I mean, I, I know you wouldn't know the exact date, obviously, but I mean, cause shortly I, after the cotton gin and and uh, the really big push for cotton as a fiber. I remember going to uh, Levi to the first Levi store there in Toronto, and uh, and getting you know uh, jeans that were hemp jeans when I was a kid. They were they were they would sell them quite readily, and then they slowly went into the cotton. Where they are now, but you can you can yeah. get hemp jeans. They're very very easy to get. They they're all online. You can buy shit. I just can't get them my size. Oh, or can, I'd be wearing them. You can get hemp anything now. Yep. But and hemp's been produced for years in in France and China. Um, Canada and the U.S. are both ideal locations to grow it. But stupidity. Well, no greed dictates that we can't grow it. So we can't grow it because it affects the the cotton industry. We can't grow it because it affects the forestry industry. We can't grow it because it affects the the uh, oil and the hydrocarbon industry. That's changing now. Though, we isn't can't it? grow it because it affects the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah, yeah. Money's already in the system. Well, yeah. well, when Canada legalizes marijuana, will they do it countrywide or will they be province by province? It'll be countrywide. We don't. Um, uh, we don't have a dif- differentiation that, that they do in the U.S. with state law versus federal law. We have federal law, and then we have some provincial laws, but they don't. The, we have a mounted police that is jurisdiction in every province except for Quebec. The feds, um, and so we have our own federal police force already. So all of our laws that fall under criminal fall under federal laws. The RCMP here is the equivalent to the FBI in the states. So. Yeah, basically, okay. yep. with full powers of arrest. And a lot of communities basically hire the RCMP to do the policing for that community yep. so they don't have to have a police force. And then belie- so when's Canada going to legalize weed then? <laughs> well, it legalized, I could see legalized possibly happening after the next election if the liberals win but it'll be a for-profit system I don't know how it'll affect the medical patients but it would be legalized but taxed and regulated like alcohol and tobacco now, what was for going, recreational what was going on today about the, there was a judge that said uh, I'm just trying to look for the article here um, I've been sick for the last couple of days. I'm not paying attention to much yeah, news. There was a, a, a judge that said something, and you guys can talk for a few minutes, and I'll try and look again. Sure. Okay. Uh, 
we now we don't have anything to say because now we're waiting on now. Yeah, thanks. Oh, man, Jack's just chilling. How you doing, Jack? I'm doing fine. I'm just listening. <laughs> the, it's the mango. The How mango long did you growing that beard for, Jack? What's that? How long have you been growing that beard for? I've had it for 40 years. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> cool. A 40 year old beer. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting. I was waiting for another no butt joke. Shaving anymore. <laughs> I was gonna. I was waiting for another right. butt joke from Adam. <laughs> <laughs> you look at your kids and say, "This beard is older than you." <laughs> but actually, yeah, they, it is. No, actually, the same age. Matthew. Uh, that's when your my son was born when I started growing it. So he's forty. <laughs> that's cool, man. How many kids do you have? Two. I got two myself. I got little twins. Oh, nice. I had I have uh, twin sisters. Oh, you do? Cool. Are, they, are your twins identical twins? No, it's fraternal. One boy and one girl. Oh, okay. Then you you don't you get stoned. Wait, they, there's a, the, the joke around my house is that the kids go down at 8 and the vaporizer goes on at 8.05. <laughs> Actually, he just never turns his off. Yeah, how <laughs> Jack's house it goes on in 1987. Let me. I'm surprised. This. I'll tell you in all honesty. I'm surprised that we don't see behind Jack a, a whole manifold system with bags sitting there filled. <laughs> Walk over, pull one off, you know, and set another one back on. Little compressor running over in the corner to keep everything inflated. No, the only time you see me vaporize is because I'm sitting here chatting with you guys doing nothing. I I usually. Do a couple of doobies in the morning when I get up, but it's it's a consumption, eh? So I, whenever I, then I just top it off a little bit. But with me, it's consumption. Oh yeah, yeah. every for. I don't know what happened there. Marcel oh, just tweaked oh, out for a second. Yeah, did you ever try out. using that did as a bong? A didgeridoo as a bong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A didgeridoo as a bong. Yeah. Yeah. No. You know, use a big power, power tokes out of that thing. I have a hookah. Oh, there you go. I have, I'd like to have a hookah. I have an old Debbie John, an antique Debbie John, or wine craft. Uh, the hookah gonna, is, gonna is actually a, a vaporizer, right? Yeah. yeah. Is it? You have a hookah vaporizer? Well, no, a hookah is a vaporizer. Okay. So yeah. you put yes. your material in yes. the top, and then yeah. there's a little plate that goes yep. on top, and then the charcoal puck sits on top and then the hot air passes through and it vaporizes yeah. just like you do with your vaporizer. Yeah. It's actually yeah. the I prefer it to the volcano how it works. Really? Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Well there's it's a reason so smooth. There's a reason them hookah lounges are popular. Yeah. We need more of those in Canada. Do they allow you to put uh, cannabis in, in the hookahs in the hookah lounges? No. No. Are no. They, well, no. depends on where you are. Some countries, that's all the sense of the hookah. No, but, but the hookah yeah. itself, the hookah itself is supposed to be something pretty. Perhaps. Uh, it was perhaps. Yeah. It was yeah. great. That's what I mean. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's called the, the hubbly bubbly. But they're, they have hookah lounges around the States. I don't know if they have them in Canada, where you can go in and you sit down and you use hookahs, and they have scents in them and, and flavors and things like that. Right, but it's tobacco. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, it's 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 not. No, not tobacco. It's that's it was, it's not tobacco. It's it's a type of tobacco, but it's not yeah. the kind that's in a cigarette. The no. different kind. It's like a raw tobacco, I think. But I think oh. that Jack is going to fill us fruit. in. Thanks on the move. <laughs> Jack's fruit. Jack's getting it. It's fruit. It's fruit. It's fruit. Yes. Yes. You see? Can you see it there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a potpourri. Yeah. Okay. This smells like it's it's cherries and apples. It, it's it's really really sweet. So you put your stuff in there, and then you take a pinch of this and lay and lay it on on top, and it vaporizes with the cannabis. It's awesome. Oh wow, that's cool, man. Okay, I want a hookah with two hoses now. <laughs> I had a two hoser at one time. Had a nice little bowl on it, and everything it was a handmade glass thing that I got at the hidden hidden. Jungle hidden. There's a store in Toronto. I know they have a big elephant out front, and I can't remember the name of it. I'm not doing too good on the memory thing. I can't find that freaking article either. I'm going to stop talking about articles. Tell you. That's a good idea. We're almost out of time now, anyways. Yes, we are. 
You guys hockey fans up there? Do we what? Pardon me? Are you guys hockey fans? No. Hockey? In Canada? I, they only kick you out if you're not hockey fans? No. <laughs> well, it depends. I mean, there's there's hardcore fans and then there's minor core fans. I got it. And watch playoffs and watch Team Canada. Yeah, I like it. I'll, I'll watch a little hockey every now and watch again. Watch every hockey game that goes on. So we I like how uh, hockey fighting is so like normal. You know, let's just pause and beat the shit out of each other for five minutes, then we'll get back to the game. <laughs> well, that's where everybody watches hockey. Never been into it. Not not been to hockey. Uh, I had weak weak ankles as a kid, and I I couldn't. Nobody wanted me on their team, so I, the hockey was not a part of my life. <laughs> I've never played it once in my life. It looks fun though. It looks hard as hell. You're trying to ice skate in, use a stick. It just it seems very hard. You really? I coach. I coached it for years. Oh, that's fun. But uh, I yeah. don't like basketball. I don't like football. I, I won't watch tennis or anything like I that. I love tennis. I love tennis. But, I think Jack's going to serenade us out the, out, out the door today when we're leaving. He's got his, his uh, harmonica in his hand. Got his harmonica, and he's going to play us a tune on the way out. Or I was stepping on it. I want to hear it. There you go. I like it, Jack. And, um, Adam, you're going to have to take Jack on the road for you. For that's, your next what I, that's what I want to be when I grow up. I want to be yeah. just like Jack. Jack can open for <laughs> you <laughs> with a few tools. In 40 <laughs> years, Adam will be <laughs> sitting. What to do with your ass. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Bend over, that's meet awesome. a friend. <laughs> and on that <laughs> note, uh, Jack, please tell us. Uh, where people can get a hold of you if they want to talk to you and learn about you, what you're doing, and things like that. Yeah, I'm on I'm on Facebook, so, okay. so that's you, where you would get a hold of me. Uh, Cannabis there. Oil Success Stories through uh, the MCPAC there too. Okay. Uh, so okay. I got a ton of information, and that's you know pretty much what I do all the time. Yeah. So if you need help and you need some questions answered, uh, you know. Give us a shout, and we'll get you in touch with Jack or Marcel or Laura. If you have or, cancer, I'll send you to Jack. There you go. And if, if you have you, MS, I'll, I'll talk to you myself. And that. if you need to hit your funny bone, we'll, we'll talk to Adam. Adam, tell people where they can get a hold of you. They can go to my website, adamhardle.com, and I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, at Adam Hardle. Yeah. And you can find us here every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Which is what in your time there, Marcel? Uh, it's, that's eight to ten my time. Yeah, and where are you, Jack? Same as uh, you. Oh, Jack. I'm at seven. You're at in. That. You're in. You're in Ontario. Not out here. Huh. And uh, Adam, you're in the same time zone too, aren't you? Yeah, East Coast. Yeah, East Coast. East Coast. East Coast. Then our Pacific Pacific <laughs> Pacific listeners get us for four twenty. <laughs> whoop whoop! <laughs> and on that note, I'm going to say good good night, gentlemen. And uh, Marcel, always a pleasure. Very it's been a blast again. Yep, very nice to meet you. Uh, finally, Jack and yeah, Adam. Thank you very much for putting up nine months. Adam waited to come on the show. Hey, so, I appreciate you having me on, man. It's been fun. Uh, we'll do it again for sure, man. You're more than welcome to come on next time. You know, when you get your next thing going, please let us know what's going for on. For sure. There. Um, and uh, I guess that's it for us. Uh, check us out next week. Uh, we'll be posting what's going on, and we always have a, a patient on. If you have a cannabis success story and you'd like to come and tell your story, like Jack did today, and uh, get a hold of Marcel or myself or or Jack or Lori, and let us know. And actually, we'll even if you have a a, a cannabis horror story. Oh, yeah, well, an unsuccessful I mean, story. I'd like to hear some unsuccessful stories. I I've seen some posts that have been unsuccessful. Well, there are lots of them. Don't yeah. you worry. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'd like them to come on and, and well, chat with us. Well, the, the, usually, what happens if it's not a success, they're not no longer on this side of the lawn. How about we will put it this way: If you got something you want to say on the subject of cannabis, uh, we'll give you a mic to do that. Yeah, we'll let you do it. And as long as you're not rude, because uh, if you're rude, I'm going to get ruder. <laughs> I'll call. Just, I'll call Jack. 
That's my day job. Yeah. Jack, Jack also does security for patients. That's enforcer. <laughs> yeah. Enforcer. It's so, been a blast, folks. And on that note, we'll say good night. This is the 420 Radio Show. Peace. <laughs> If you like weed, well, we're gonna be good friends indeed Cause there's not much I like more than smoking trees They'll make you dance the dozy do And teach you how to achieve the grow Smoke a bowl on the 420 Radio Show On Lifestyle Radio Now you good? Nothing? Nothing? Why not? It's time to get on this Lifestyle Radio website Sounds like a cool website Yeah, it's alright Oh, you might have it. You're listening to Life.